So that'll be uh, page 119 in the notes, the first two numbers there, 25 and 26. And the first seven says, come and be So Paul's uh, point in this paragraph, if you will, uh, is that uh, live and let live, basically, are uh, points of our law, uh, points that are not commanded by God or prohibited by God. Live and let live. Somebody wants to say a certain kind of number of days, a certain day of the week, a certain point of people who like to worship the whole day, fine. You want to do it different by fine tuning, others that's great, great. And the goal put burden on the people that God does not say. This is always kind of a big thing in the past. And then basically ends up in the last year's day of birth, and that ends up in the last year's day of birth, and that ends up in the last year's day of birth, and that ends up in the last year's day of birth, and that ends up in the last year's day of birth, and that ends up in the last year's day of birth. There's not supposed to be any difference between the living believers and the dead believers as far as what it is for the dead Now, of course, if the dead believers want to live in the sun, they want to be controlled, and if that's not a problem, of course, that's their problem. Right? But the point is that those that are living still on earth and in the body, okay, the requirement is so there's no ceremonial law in the law. So there's no extra provisions uh, like we have in the Old Testament about food or about clothes or about days of the week or about certain festivals or about times of the year and so on and so forth. So those things uh, do not apply. They certainly don't apply to the law. They certainly don't apply to the Old Testament. Obviously, you can have a Souls, like whether there's food in heaven, I don't know, but I guess there are prostitutes that buy their own food sometimes, I don't know. But whether there's a lot of souls to lose them, so those things don't apply. Okay. So, since they don't apply to the, the souls in heaven, they don't apply to us. That, that's the idea here. Right? It, it's really kind of a revolutionary idea. You're like, Certainly, the revolution has to be for you, so that's the problem. But it's even a revolutionary idea for a lot of Christians today. We, we, have, a, we have a tendency to make the law and impose the law on people. Now, that's a little different from deciding what is law and sticking to the law. So, for example, <coughs> We have decided here uh, to have a supper every Sunday. So, us, I do not call the congregation to keep that because we are all sinners and we are all unbelievers, and they don't have to eat that every Sunday. To me, that would be much of a lie. Do I get to do it? No, I do. Can I tell them that? Yes, I do. I tell them that all the time. But I don't distribute that to the Okay? So, of course, that's a liturgy. Okay? It is a historic liturgy. Yeah. 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 Everybody has to keep this thing. I don't say that they don't need to be a historic liturgy. I'm not saying, I do say that they don't need to be a historic liturgy. But to be made to contemporary for our worship, I would rather we make it more uh, consistent with our thoughts. Private access uh, to a very just righteous situation for the Christ of Christianity. I can't do it by law, but if I decide that I want to hurt somebody, I can't do it by law, I can use that to do it with them. Okay? So they they are supposed to apply it to the saints of heaven. They don't apply it to the saints of heaven, but they apply it to the saints of earth. Okay? Uh, Jesus is Lord of the living and the dead. That's the idea. Let's look at some more. Many of our offenses are incorrectly to a subject when we hold them up to the light of Christ. However, paradoxical to the point is the limitation that such viewpoint puts on us that constitutes a Christian virtue. The limitation that Christ says, don't judge, meets law. Stick with 
Since we are the connection of this technology of the rest of the world, since we belong to another in every state of our existence, we belong to Jesus now, we belong to Jesus in We are bound to do His will. We have no right to assume the prerogative of sitting in judgment of God. We need something that we can that not include matters of moral law. And it's not even we judges, even though we might say something. But it's not we judges, it's not we judges. Uh, and we are all subject. We are all bound to be the good of Christ. All other Christians are subject to the Lord's manner. So our answers are not to us, but directly to the Lord's people. And so we have the same way that we have come to so, what's the, you can find out how to do it. You can find a way 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 to do it. Thank you. 
anyway, his argument basically is that the place of the Sabbath is called the first, and it says, God forbid, is to rule, therefore, the The point, I mean, but anyway, I, I, I still think this is something that gets yeah, to the point. I think this is this is a good point. Yes, this is a good point. Thank you. I'm glad that means that that's what's happening in the book. That's what the book is doing. It's a good point. That's a good point. He's responsible for the book. 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 He's responsible All other things are here. Liberty of Christ. Right. Number 26. Any theme that the mention of Christ's death and resurrection is to know that would need to be proven in the context. The words that we spend to conceive in the connection of everything Paul is saying in the text. We all know that the primary value of Christ's death and resurrection lies in our salvation from sin. The guide for us is the very first justification. Here, Paul is the part of the text that Christ's death and resurrection qualifies him to be judged as a man of Christ. Jesus himself testifies to this, and he said, Lord, the Father gave no one, but he has tested all the things to the Son. In speaking to the philosophers in Athens, Paul said, The Father said, Of course, that he would judge the world with justice by the man who is Jesus, who has a faith, which is the proof of this to our own salvation. So, uh, again, we, when we do judge, or when it sounds like we're judging, we are not. We are letting Christ be. Let Christ judge Jesus' work. The words in the gospel are spoken by Jesus, and the words in the rest of the New Testament are spoken by the Bible. We never judge. Anybody that accuses us of judgment, we talk about homosexuality, and we talk about adultery and divorce, and we talk about any of these moral issues, or abortion, or any of that. And people say, well, you're not supposed to judge. Judge not, let you not be judged. Right away, it's always to be really God's judge. I, God's judge. God is judge. God's word is clearly judge. Do not murder. God's word clearly condemns and says, no. It's not God's word that does that. I don't do that. God's word does that. And so on and so forth. So all of these words and stuff that we have to do. Yeah, I knew 
Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, the reason for that, Laura, uh, the reason for that great discussion is that the five and third is that we are using the record to look at and also to make the people who are important. I think probably a higher figure the Roman figure is probably the five thousand All right, let's read on. Let's go on next couple of verses anyway. But you, uh, why do you judge your brother? Or again, why do you regard your brother with contempt? And this is talking about the body of the church. This is talking about the whole thing you need to come forward to there to be with the body of the church. So why do you do that? For we will all stand before the judgment of the body. So, so again, don't put yourself in God's place. If, if God says it, God says to do it or not to do it, then it's it. If God doesn't say to do it, or doesn't say not to do it, then don't be judging. Then you're fine. Don't make up new judgments. Then you're fine. And it's written, as the Lord says the Lord, and you shall out to you, and then he's trying to take your faith to God. So let each one of us will give an account of his faith to God. Yes, there's always a cost to this. This is not really the Right. Right. 
told us. It's in this text. It's in this picture of heaven. It's in this picture. We can we can say this. Believers, when believers give an account, believers give an account. They're Christians. Because believers will say, I know it. And we point to Christ, he did. How do we know he did? Because he got punished. So, you know, you are tough to do that. You think about giving God an account. Well, I'm going to see you as a good person. So, you can stop and wait for God and pray the Lord and stop and pray the Lord and stop. No. Don't think about that. Give an account to him. Just to do that. So, you know, you can put the gift away. You can say, well, yeah, I'm guilty, but. He gets punished. Either way, as a believer, that would go get you. That's the kind of answer that you'll get. Your answer will be so pretty short to see you get a you know, uh, covered by the blood of Christ, but it's not the end of it. So, it's, it's not something to do that. That's what most Christians look upon as a great benefit to that. And you think, well, the leaders have to do it. Other believers have to do it. I don't believe it. I don't want to have to do that. So you won't have to do that. Because you're going to see Christ. You're going to go to the Jesus. You're going to say, well, oh, Jesus, you did it. And you got punished for it. I don't think so. And you look back on the day like this is perfect. And you're upset. And you're all guilty about it. You don't have to say, I'm going to go to this and I'm going to go to this. I'm going to go so, so however you want to look at it, don't look at it the way, uh, unfortunately, the way preachers will talk about it, is because you don't want to be doing anything that you're going to have to get an answer for later on. That's all. That's what it says. That's what it says. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think so too. Uh, you know, people have a question for it because this is called judgment. <laughs> okay? And so people have a problem with that. They say, well, okay, you already were judged once. How come you get judged again? Well, even though it's called judgment, it, it, it really is um, it, it, it's a gratification. Think of, it, think of it as a gratification. Uh, don't think of it as a discipline, as a new day. Think of it as a defeat. Or some people with some justice and professors have said, think of this as a private day and this as a public day. In other words, this is one on one. Person dies, goes to heaven. That's one on one, woman dies. And so, yeah, I, I think it fits better there, probably. Okay? It does. It fits better there. And then you know, you take the idea um, and, and think then of the judgment day as Jesus basically ratifying it. So, yeah, you see all these people over here who speak, okay? they, they were already judged you know, individually, and now they're going back to the judgment day. So, okay? and, and you guys, you too, okay? you, you also were on the judgment day. And of course, the ones who are living in the judgment day, they will be judged. So, so it is a judgment day in that sense, certainly for the ones who live in that day. The people living on that day were not bad. So there is no separation of body and soul. There's no reunification of body and soul. People who are living on the last day of judgment day will therefore need to make that word. So it is judgment day for this. So we'll see the guy before it's used just as gratification of a previous day. That's probably the best way to think of it. 
it's hard for us to wrap our minds around the afterlife because of this problem in the And when you go there, it's tough to deal with it. You have a very hard time writing Uh, 27. Uh, the words in verse 10 use it must have been done with Paul's readers of what he wrote in chapter 2 about the Jews and the And I put it in here rather than go back to the front. You therefore have words to speak. You do pass judgment on some other. For at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemned by Christ. Because you do pass judgment to the same thing. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you and your men can pass judgment on them and get to the same things, do you think you will escape out of the same things? He's talking about sex. He's talking about the Jews and he's saying to the Jews, you know, you guys are judging your sex. He said, you need to go out and do it. And I said, well, what's the problem about the sex? And I said, well, that's fine. Or whatever. You do the same kind of thing. You do the same thing. You say exactly the same thing that this other has been. Like we're just saying, that's the Christ to me, and the Jews who get this thing, who are they not? Are they going to be the ones who die? Yes, that's what they are. So when they condemn the Gentiles for work that is evil, they're just as bad. So God, they will just let me do it. So God, they will just have to tell me to do that. So this is you know, the problem with having what I call Judeo-Christian uh, culture. Right? Uh, by having, uh, by combining Jewish and Christian culture with Judeo-Christian, right? That's bad. Because they're not the that's the case. You do not worship the God of Abraham. You think they do, but they don't. Right? Because the God of Abraham is the triune God. The God of Abraham is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The God of Abraham is the Isaac, the Jacob, the God of Joseph, the God of Israel, the God of David, the God of Solomon, the God of Isaac, the God of Israel, the God of Israel, and all the rest of it is the triune God of God. That didn't all of a sudden become triune when Jesus was conceived. That was always a triune. Always. Even in the Old Testament. And there's plenty of, we basically just hear the Testament of Christ. We basically, there's plenty of uh, hints in the Old Testament. And, okay, maybe it's not, you know, clearly spelled out in BC, one, two, three. But there's plenty of indications in the Old Testament of God's Trinity. No question about it. The Old Testament speaks of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. No question about it. No. So the Old Testament speaks of sin, even though it doesn't put them together and talk about any sin in the New Testament. And the Jews understood. They didn't use the word sin. But they did understand. They did understand. The days of Isaiah, they did understand. The Lord of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they were all one time. They did understand that. Was, that was the thing that you can find it if you're a commentary written back in the Okay? So, so they understood that. Now, of course, today, after they were just conceived, they don't want those things. So, they didn't say they would ignore that stuff in their text, but they reinterpret it differently. But when they worship their, you know, their, their Yahweh, their Jehovah, okay? It's a false God. It's not a God that exists. It's not in the same way that they the fact that those parents were there. It exists. He doesn't exist either. The God of the morning doesn't exist. The God of the Christian scientists does not exist. They are, they're not as well as people. They don't exist. So, so that's what Paul says. Right? He says, right? you, you point the finger at the Gentiles and say, oh, you Gentiles, you dumb Gentiles, you, you worship Jews. Well, that's what? 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 You're doing the exact same thing. That's what he's telling you. Okay? And being so content for the riches of the kindness of power of the patients, not realizing that that kindness leads you towards the kindness. So, 
Not as being visible, but not as being physically visible. Quickly, they just come to the They just come to the place. Point is, that in the first instance, passing judgment on a fellow believer often is done for the ulterior motive of coming up for the old person. You think that he is just for Number well, 29, this does not mean there are no situations in which judgment is not appropriate. All discipline is based on judgment. A parent has the right and obligation to discipline the child, a teacher, a pupil. As members of the body of Christ, we have the obligation to warn and admonish one another in cases of blatant sin. Underline blatant sin. It's the word blatant means obvious, open, clear. And how do you know that? Because there's an obvious, open, clear passage of the Bible that says that is this. When Paul talks about homosexual offenders, okay, he's saying that homosexuality is an offense. Okay, that's a clear topic. Okay. A lot of people will say, well, you don't know what it says in the Bible. Well, yeah, I did. He did. He said, Have you not read the book of the Bible? And then the lady said, I don't know if you can tell me that I'm going to be a husband and a family member of life and a few of the ones like that. That's very, right? That's Jesus talking. And so, as far as he's concerned, he always did it one of four women. Now, two men, two women. One of four women. Now, Jesus himself. Now, you know, if that's going to be enough for you, there's lots of passages in Paul, in his letters, that talk about the sin of homosexuality. So, for people to say, oh, you do do. No. Again, God is done. God's word is very clear. Okay? This is. Otherwise, you just for six or six years to bring them over to your house. You can never use that piece of paper. The definition talks about when you see your brother sinning, go to him and say, hey, God says that's wrong. Now, I say it's wrong. God says it's wrong. If you won't hear you, take somebody else. If you won't hear from both of you, they say, go to the church. And when the church says, we have to communicate to you. And you acknowledge you are outside of the pale of being. You are outside. You, you, you have demonstrated yourself as being an unbeliever. That's not a communication to me. That communication is not the communication to me. No. Because it's me that you're unrepentant. You know, when I have a, when I have a person, let's say, a person who's 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 Don't take this person in. Don't take this person as a member. Why? Because this person is living in sin. This person is unrepentant. This person committed adultery very clearly, very blatantly, very openly committed adultery and claimed that they have the right to do so. Because I 
So I told this person, I said, don't take this person to leave. So I'll take that to this place as well. To do it. To do it like that. To do it like that. You need to fix the problem because you're married. The person you're referring to know for this, and I'm not saying, but still, so you can just say, you'll say, you'll say it was right. My spouse is a jerk. 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 Well, in this particular case, probably in fact, no, no. Well, I think that's pretty clear, isn't it? Every every pain in the butt that I have, you know, and every time I fall down, every time I have to get better prescriptions in my glasses, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Happiness, my happiness is not number one on his agenda. My pleasure is not top by priority. Sometimes I wish it was, but it clearly is not. All right, moving on. Verse 11, we read, it says, Verse 11 is a quotation from Isaiah, where he reads, Myself, I have sworn, my mouth has uttered an iron ticket to your word that will not be revoked before me of the year of God. Again, I just said, I'm the only one in the world. Nobody else has the right to judge you. You don't judge, you don't use me. You don't use my word. You don't even stick in your own ideas, and your own things, 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 and your own things. It's either God, it's either me or not. This passage originally did not refer to fishing things to a judgment. But express the truth to all believers to the knowledge of God's dominion. It is applicable, however, to judgment as it is any other act of homage which is people who are And not just this people, but all people. Every movie. Which is why I remind believers that no matter how much you may be persecuted, no matter how small you may be persecuted, no matter how horrendous you may be persecuted, no matter how outnumbered you may be persecuted, there is a day when we will look upon our enemies, the underbelly, and we will say, no matter what they have numbers, they will be on their way out for a little time. And they will have to have the loot. We will get to be taken right. Now, whether or not we'll be able to draw our hands to the rest of their thoughts, how does it go? I doubt that. But God will really have to do that. I warned you. I, you know, I warned you. So, so the unbelievers will win a lot of battles. They'll win a lot of war. They'll drive the church on the ground. They'll be treated. They'll be treated. They'll be treated. They'll be treated. They'll be But what we need to always remember is this verse okay, that the unbelievers will bow down to the church. But I'm not going to do that. Thirty-one. In the way in which Paul inserts this quotation, he diverts the attention from the servant back to the master. Thus, in verse twelve and thirteen, Paul points out that if we realize who God is, we leave the evaluation of our brothers and sisters to Him instead of wanting to do that work for Him. Instead of criticizing, we have the obligation to clear the way for our fellow humans so that we do not make them stumble. To clear the way, to point out clearly what they're to do and what they're not to do. To warn them that they're doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing, or if they're not doing what they should be doing, 
And other than this, you get away from all the other man-made laws. You get away from all the other restrictions that might come between the two. So, you know, again, when it comes to me, so I think I I recognize two things. I recognize the person's faith is very deep and small. And deep a lot of flesh. Right? And I'm not going to do that person. Because I'm feeding you. I'm feeding the majority. And I'm not going to change to the other copy of clown person to please one person. Somebody just took the other day. Emotions just wait for the family. Right? I can't help that. That's the way I'm born and raised. But that's what I want for the most people. I'm not able to a lot of people to take that picture of the rest of it. We can see how to be successful, to be awesome, and to be saved. So, but again, I don't put a roadblock, okay? Do not make them stumble on the road of that I'm not 
Every now and then, maybe every other month or so or whatever, you see this person staggering out of all trouble. Or whatever. All of that. And so, now, your first information is the core. I know he's bad. I know he's bad. <laughs> That's like the problem. Right? And you can tell other people, boy, oh, you know, Joe, Joe, he really is the problem. He's just about to be a problem. He's just about to be a problem. He's 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 a problem. Well, he certainly is not a friend of the Lord. Whatever. So, for the Oh, you got a clue for it. I know it. I know it. So now, let me make a cup of coffee. So, I do think it's a common problem because people don't like to do it. And it's a lot easier to tell your friends that don't do it. Than it is to talk to Joe. Or it's a lot easier to talk to your friends and tell everybody else your friends who have a glorious person, or you have a celebration person, or you have a not being a nice to this person, than it is to say to the pastor, Pastor, have you talked to this person? Go ahead, let's talk to him. Those things are quite good. If it's too short, so if it's too short, so it's not too short. Very close. Very close. Because you are a person who's been working. Very close. Usually, when I play that game, I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going in which case I have all the couple of the people, the people that can find the right for it, and the to you, and just stop the door. And I often get, you can do that without touching the whole region. I don't know what I'm doing. That's a stupid thing. Yeah, I guess I'm not sure if it's a good I 
Is that you? Is that put in for it? Yeah. Is that put in for it? No, I well, don't ever really do. Uh, in the Eastern Church, the nineteen people is deep. Yeah. And, and I believe that's it. Uh, I don't think the East. Eastern Church likes the Apostles' Creed because it's too simple, it's too general. I think it's right, yeah. Uh, and again, the they would say, we don't know who the author is. We know that we know who the author is. 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 We know they can say, well, we know who wrote the book. We know that. And we know when it was approved by the church. It was approved by the whole church, that is that right here. 
Okay, that's cool. So we wait for our Lord to be Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Father, 